Hey, Steve here with SSI. Always wear these in the shop. Just to make sure you know. <clears throat> On today's episode, I told you that I was going to make a camera mount. Well, let me show you what I'm kind of up against here and what I'm going to do to solve the problem. Okay, this is the little mount I use as of right now. I'm not going to beat it with a hammer, don't worry. But anyway, this holds my camera, right? Which is a cell phone. That's what I'm using at the moment. This little screw goes through this hole, clamps that thing together, and swivels and moves and everything. Well, I've got a really nice tripod that uses this type of mount for a camera. That's what it's for. It's for a camera or a Sony Handycam or whatever. But anyway, this little screw is quarter twenty, and it's got a little locking pin that keeps everything from turning. But this locks into the base and locks into the and locks the camera to it. So I just noticed this thing is springy. Doesn't have to have it. I probably really don't need it, so this ought to be a pretty quick build. So the first thing we have to do is mimic this piece, this piece on top. So I'm going to have to measure it width, height. Uh, the radius here and basically just make an aluminum block I think that's all it doesn't have to have any of this specialty if I can get it in the light here so you can see it see how that's got a hexagon deal in the center both sides it don't need that because this thing is just flat on the inside of it get a decent picture there it is yeah it just clamps down pressure keeps it from moving around but the tripod I have is really nice this one's really small it's one of those uh, collapsible selfie sticks with a button so you can extend it out take a picture of yourself all that good stuff I don't use that portion of it but it's been handy so far it does it sits in little short stocky places my other tripod you know is real tall so I'm just gonna make this piece that fits on that piece and I'll make this piece out of aluminum so I'll do that on the milling machine it shouldn't take much I may have to saw a chunk you know, fly cut the ends or whatever then cut this radius which shouldn't be too hard drill a hole and cut a radius and then cut a radius on a milling machine is no big deal it doesn't look the prettiest thing in the world but hey, it gets the job done so I'll take some measurements and get a chunk of material up in the mill and we'll start chopping it up. Okay, I found a one inch by one inch chunk of square stock. That should be plenty of material. It's like an inch, 50 thousandths at the very base of it. I'm not going to worry about 50 thousandths since the other part's actually smaller. So I'm going to fly cut the, fly cut this thing and uh, probably do it at a pretty high rate of speed and start building it and see where we come from. And then just go up about Just 20. See what 20 does for us. Just a little bit, maybe half a thousand. Something more like one. And, whoops, 
They did a lot better job in this on the steel than they did this piece of aluminum, which is strange. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they pretty. I've got to figure out this fly pitter issue. And they wind up having to go buy some bits. Well, you can still see a little bit of reflection. See that thing wiggling there? That's the belt of the machine. So, giving me a little bit of vibration. It's funny, I can't see it with a naked eye. But in this camera, I can. <laughs> That's cool. Alright, flip it over to the other side. Okay. <clears throat> As you can see, I've already taken a little bit of a cut. What I did was I took the part, flipped it over, stuck it back in the vise, clamped it down, then ran it back underneath just to see on the other side how much taller it was and you can see it took just a little bit of a bite so and it's pretty equal across from what it looks like I mean it looks like it's more on one side than in the other but it's really not so, I'll raise the table just a few thousandths and take another pass here see if I can get a little bit closer and, uh, and watch this thing cut, do its thing. Yeah, the other side wound up looking a lot nicer than what it did on camera. And this has been cut off with a bandsaw, so you can see the little blade marks that the bandsaw made. And it's just skimming the top of this thing. Because that saw actually flexes as it goes through the workpiece. And just ever so slightly. And the saw doesn't look like it cuts perfectly straight, which is fine. You always have to go and true up work no matter what. Well, you don't want the saw you know, cutting at a 45 degree angle so far off, but you, know, you would like to have it somewhat straight. And this is somewhat straight. This is straight enough for me. I don't mind a bit. And I don't like cutting this stuff off with a hacksaw. Looks like it just got just below the, the cut line there. And I don't really care how much I cut off. I don't really mind how tall this thing is or anything. I just need it made so I can get it on the get it into use. I'm not gonna do the sides or any of that. There's literally just going to be a chunk of milled aluminum stick out there. I might sand it. Maybe I'll paint it black. But, so that's good enough. That'll, that'll work just fine. Because now I'll take a uh, I've got a full free carbide uh, end mill. The camera gets situated there as you can see it. 
Oops. Focus. There it is. It looks worse than what it is. So, it's okay. But anyway, uh, I'll get the end mill out and start hacking on it and see what I can do to make this thing look similar to what I've got. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll probably drill a hole in it. Make sure I get that in there before I cut any of the sides. Just so I'd, I'm sure I know where it's at. So I'll drill it and uh, get it back in this in this vise and start hacking it up. Make it what I need it to be. Okay. Wanted to show you something before I actually did it. I saw this little contraption in a magazine. As you can see it's got aluminum block, a mirror, goes into the chuck and has a little piece of acrylic there. Well, let me turn it this way. And then the mirror sits at a 45 degree angle. This thing was, I blind bored it. I saw it years ago. And I thought, well, you know, I think I'd like to make one. This is actually a centering scope. Basically. <laughs> it's not the, uh, not the store-bought version you're used to seeing, but I saw it as a, as a little hobby thing somebody made. Uh, I think it was in a machinery book or something. I thought, well, that was pretty neat. I could probably build that. So that was, golly, it's 20 years ago. But anyway, I saw it and I made one, and I've had it ever since, and I've used the living crap out of it. And let's see if I can get a shot of the inside here where you guys can see it. You can see it right there. I put a little crosshair down there on the block to and since I'm not using an edge finder or anything of that nature to find the center of this workpiece because it's just not that critical I mean, you don't want to put it over on the edge or anything but just getting it close to center is all that's needed it doesn't have to be perfect for this little particular job so I just scribed it with a set of calipers. I know there's going to be people out there that cringe and say, Oh, I can't believe you do that. I don't care. It's my tools. I'll do what I do with them what I want. But, so I scribed it real lightly. And you can see the center of that dot there. That is the where the drill point will go. So I'll use a, a spotting drill first. Then I'll drill at number seven. Then I'll tap at quarter twenty. All on the drill press one operation right after the other that's the best way to keep it straight and go in the right direction you spot drill drill the hole to depth then run your tap behind it not under power just hand tap it with grabbing the spindle and turning it by hand to get it started you don't have to tap the whole thing that way you just need to get three or four threads in just to get it started so you can finish it up with a hand tap uh, i know they make the little spring apparatuses that you can put in the chuck and uh, all that good stuff you know it keeps your tap straight for you which is fine if you've got that type of tap that it'll work on uh, I don't on this particular size so I'm not going to use it I'm just going to start it by hand and uh, tap it with a standard uh, hand tap uh, handle and it'll be fine I mean it's just <laughs> there's only going to be three or four threads that even go in this thing to hold it down it will stay on there just fine so after I get this tapped uh, drilled and tapped then I'll turn it over on the side I'll drill a hole through it for the clamp then I'll mill the material away that I don't need I just thought that was neat that's a neat little neat little helper right there when you don't have to be just critical as can be and I'll make one and uh, post it so you guys can see it I mean it's pretty simple so Anyway, I'll get that done. Be right back. Okay, well, I've got all the little holes drilled. You can see one right there. That's actually where the pivot goes through. But you see these lines that I've milled or I've scribed on here? These are all guidelines. Make sure what I'm getting ready to do is going to be what I want to do. So... I'm going to cut this thing down a little bit. I've got to go 925 thousandths down 
that's what that line's for. I've got to go 160 thousandths off each side where the hole is. So that's from like this edge to this far line here. This other one's just a scratch. Oops. So that line to this edge is 160. Then from this line to this edge is 100 thousandths on each side. So I'm going to do that and mill that thing a square, then I'm going to put a radius on it. So I'll be back in just a minute. Hi Steve, again. Okay, we have worked on our little camera mount project, which we're getting ready to do a radius on around the top here. Excuse me, around the top. We're going to radius this off. This way, this thing will screw in, screw on to this little base so it will fit on this tripod. Granted, I know this is not the most complicated project in the world, but it's still a project. Now, you've been watching my videos off and on here a little bit, and probably one thing you've probably noticed is that uh, I haven't made a reference to speeds and feeds and all that kind of stuff. Well, I agree. I haven't made a reference to it at all. Because I assume, which I probably shouldn't, that most of you already know how to do a little bit of machine work. And those types of questions will be answered in future episodes when we really start going into some basics. I've done one over thread wires. I did a milling machine against a drill press got some comments on that one that's for sure and that's okay I don't mind them a bit I've done this for a long time I've repurposed a lot of stuff for a long time I've used things that I've had to use regardless if they were meant to be used for that or not doesn't matter right now this is just about the projects just building little things and working through it if you've done machine work in the past then you know all this stuff not really much else I can say about that when we go into or whenever I go into building certain things uh, later on and actually get into the fundamentals of machining which is one of my plans in the future sure I'll start adding a lot of that information in but for most of the people that I've talked to uh, about doing some of these videos they're not really worried so much about the fundamentals they just want to know what what it is we're making, how we make it, how do we look at a project, how do we develop it as we go along. Some of my methods are definitely not conventional. I just kind of do it on the fly as I go. That's the kind of stuff I like to do. I don't really want to get stuck into a corner. Sometimes I machine myself into a corner and for some of you guys that's machined a while like I have absolutely know what I'm talking about. Once you get put into a corner, sometimes you just have to start all over. Sometimes you have to find unconventional means to get you out of it. So I'm going to finish up this little camera mount project. And I'm going to put this larger tripod into use. And maybe I can get some better shots for you. And definitely not as shaky. Yeah. Again, I apologize. I am new to this YouTube thing. I haven't done much of this video and videotaping myself. It is kind of strange at first, uh, but as things go on, as things progress, it will get better. That I'm pretty sure of. So, here we go. Before we get into this a little bit, I just wanted to show you something here before I get going on the milling machine. Every machine should have something like this. This is a box full of all different kinds of pins. Some of them are precision ground. Most of them are that type of pin right there and if you're looking for a good pin to put across something or to use then having a good set you can buy them in lots of different places this is the particular one I think I'm going to use goes into that hole pretty decently as you can see I've marked on the actual piece of material here what what I want to use it for uh, these marks indicate basically the, the 
where the hole would extend to if it was drilled down in this area on both sides. So I'll show you why here in just a second of what we're going to do with all this, but uh, just one thing to keep in mind, always need pins. Okay, I'm going to try and stay out of the way here so you can see this. <laughs> But what I want to show you is I'm getting ready to do a radius on this piece. So with a milling machine a lot of the times this is kind of a cheesy way to do it but it works pretty decently and a lot of the times you can finish it off with just a little sander and or file, hand file either way, but it looks pretty decent. Okay now you've noticed the pins in the hole, the pin is laying on top of the vise jaw. I probably should wipe that off before I start which I will. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, pins laying on the vise jaw, you can see the line there that I just marked on the side of that piece. Now, that is so I can ensure that it's pretty well straight, even though it's by eye. I didn't run an indicator over it. This is not that critical. This is just for a little bit of clearance. And if it doesn't clear, when I get done... I can go back and do it again, or I can just file a little bit more and it will be fine. This is a camera mount. This is nothing extremely precise. So, before I get beat up on all that, marked a couple lines where each side of the hole basically ends, and now I'm going to set the end mill to the side of that piece with a feeler gauge. Then I'll drop it a hundred thousandths of an inch. The reason I got to drop it a hundred thousandths of an inch because the side I'm getting ready to indicate is a hundred thousandths of an inch higher than the side I actually want to radius. So the right side is higher than the left side of what you're looking at. So I'm going to do that right now. And try and stay out of the shot as much as possible. This happens to be a 2007 inch feeler gauge. So we're 2007 inch away from where I want to be. So logic would dictate that I would raise it 102 thousandths and I should be where I want to be. I didn't leave any marks across the top of the part there, so I'm either a thousandth away or just really, really close. So the next process, you'll see why I did that. Yes, I'm going to wipe off the top of the jaws, and yes, it will probably mess up my measurement just a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be enough to really matter for what I'm getting ready to do. So, be back in just a second, and we'll cut some material off. Okay, it's about the best angle I can give you uh, for what I'm getting ready to do. Let's see if I can open up the shot a little. Okay. About the best angle I can give you. And you'll see what I'm getting ready to do is I'm going to basically rotate this piece up and down like so to cut my radius. Now I'm never going to change the height of this cutter. So I'm just going to move it down a little bit, cut, move it down a little bit, cut, move it down a little bit, cut, and repeat, repeat. And yes, it's going to leave just straight cuts, but it helps with the radius. 
and is there any, any particular place that you don't want to cut well sure there probably is uh, I'm not going to worry about it too much at the moment until I really get into where I want to go um, I guess I could let's let's do a little bit one other thing before we actually get started here is I will mark where I don't want to cut and looking at my measurements uh, from the top of the hole from the top of the hole to the top of the radius is 320 thousandths plus basically 200 because the hole is 197 thousandths so 320 be 420 be 520 down from the top and we'll go ahead and mark it and I'm just going to use a sharpie and some caliper here real quick just to give me a couple of sight lines of where not where not to cut, where I don't really want to cut. see it so there's a sight line there there's a sight line there we don't really want to cut anything past that I don't think we're going to anyway so this is kind of one of those uh, and I want to keep this side toward me so I can kind of see what my angle is as far as these two lines right here it's not the most scientific way so I'm just going to angle it down just a, just a little bit. I'm going to clamp this block into place. And we'll make a couple of cuts, see what we come up with. And always tighten up whatever axis that you're not using. I'm just going to do one side, and I'll do the other side off camera. a little bit turn the machine off just to make sure I don't get my finger caught in this thing
even though you slide your finger under them every once in a while I want to get you it don't take much to cut a person with one of these end mills We'll probably put this whole section here on a high speed just so you can go through it pretty quick.
about all I can do with this. You know, side where you can actually see it looks there's a lot of flats there. Just one right after the other. So you can always take this and just run a piece of sandpaper across it or a file and kind of round that out. Like I said, it's kind of a not the greatest way to put a, a radius on a piece in a milling machine. But it does work. It will, it will do what you need it to do, especially in this kind of a situation. So, I will probably just put the sander to this and kind of round it out a little bit. And this thing will be, well, first I'm going to cut this side, but I'll do that off camera. Then I'll sand it. Then we'll come back and do a little follow up there at the end. Okay, so here's the little mount actually mounted to the tripod. That's a decent sized tripod. It really should help. So, full range of motion, except backwards, as you can tell why. I'm not really worried about it. It's got as much as the other one did. You can tighten that up anywhere, which is fine and dandy because this whole apparatus turns and swivels and I didn't even have to do this radius. I really didn't have to. I threw in a couple of stills so you can see what it looked like. So that's that's what we've got. Okay, we're here using the new mount that we just built here on the tripod. I like this thing a whole lot better. It goes a lot higher. It has a lot more functions, a lot more movement, different axes. Uh, so it'll be real helpful in upcoming projects. I am working on a project now that I plan on showing later. Um, got basically part one of it done, still working on the rest of it. It's a little bit larger project. It's going to be a multi-episode. I'll try to keep the episodes down to about 20 minutes uh, hereabouts. Um, so I do like repurposing things. This little one inch block was just a piece of scrap laying in a drawer. Didn't do much of anything except lay there for a very long time. I'm all about reusing stuff. So hopefully I will see you next time and I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it is pretty simple. But uh, I'll try to keep them coming and do what I can. Thanks for watching.